Jews, Christians, Muslims. They are each people of one God, the same God. They share one founding father in faith, Abraham. Their spiritual origins are traced to Abraham through their sacred writings. For Jews, the book of Genesis identifies Abraham and Sarah with their son Isaac as recipients of God's revelation and blessings. For Christians, St. Matthew's Gospel provides a genealogy of Jesus Christ across many generations through Isaac to Abraham. For Muslims, the Quran indicates a descent from Ishmael, son of Abraham and Hagar, who was made servant to Sarah. The history of the relationships amongst Abraham's children has, as we all know, often been troubled. But today's descendants of Abraham are discovering their common ground, and in doing so, are also finding much to enrich their own faiths as Jews, Christians, and Muslims. The more I learn about Christianity, the more I realize that I'm far more Jewish than I ever thought I am. Um, because I'm a secular Jew, or what is called a secular Jew in Israel. I don't practice Judaism the way that Orthodox Jews practice Judaism. But um, Judaism is my world and my history. Every morning I woke up to the Muslim call to prayer at 4.30 or 5.30 in the morning. Very striking, piercing, rather harsh at first. I grew very accustomed to that. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Rahmin. God is the ever greater one. Which God? My God. The God of Christians, the God of Muslims, the God of Jews. In the Quran, it keeps talking about the believers, the believers. And the believers that it talks about in the Quran are not Muslims per se, it's people who believe in God. I mean, from the beginning of history, have people believed in God. Adam believed in God, and Abraham, and they all believed in God. So, you know, I, I want to be a part of that history. I want to be accepting of that history and to, to grow with it. Through different times and different cultures and in some very different ways, Jews, Christians and Muslims have made the decision to worship the same Almighty God and to take the instruction of this God as their guiding ethic to every aspect of life. Despite their self-evident diversity, they share central ideas about human conduct, love, and social justice. I would like to remind myself and to tell you that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, once said, and I'll just say it in Arabic first and then translate. He said, Khair Nas, the best of the people are those, unfound Nas, who provide the greatest service to people. I can't be Christian if I am not committed to social justice. I can't be Christian if I am not loving my neighbor. And my neighbor is the one who needs me, not the one who is in a good relation with me and the one who lives with me. My neighbor is the one who needs my love, my mercy, my human uh, relations to him. An ethical common denominator across the board for all three Abrahamic traditions is the golden rule. Whether it was taught by the Jew Jesus, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, or by the Jew Hillel, almost a contemporary of Jesus, what is hateful to you, don't do unto others. A double negative. The principle is the same. Judaism and Christianity and Islam, In this series, we will meet members of the three Abrahamic faith communities men and women, bishops, rabbis, imams and scholars, parents, teachers and students, who in the living of their faith seek to know and appreciate the faith of each other. Our pilgrimage to the Holy Land is to discover once again the origins of our relationship to our God, 
and to understand what that implies for human conduct, not just among Jews, Christians, and Muslims, but for everyone. We will see that in the holiest of lands, where God's revelation began, that there are many who believe that peace cannot come about unless Abraham's children can see their common legacy and begin to treat each other as real cousins, designated by God himself to carry out his revelation about what it truly means to be human.